Welcome to the Dental Implant Practices Podcast, where each episode will explore how to integrate dental implants into your practice and into bone with your host, Dr. Philip Gordon. Hey guys, thanks for being listening to the show. Go to dentalimplantpractices.com and find all of our resources. Also find us on Facebook, Dental Implant Practices page on Facebook. And go to iTunes and leave me a review on iTunes so we can help spread the message. Thanks. Welcome back to another episode of the Dental Implant Practices podcast. I'm your host, Philip Gordon. And today it's a huge honor for me to introduce Dr. Maurice Salama. Uh, Maurice, thanks for being on the show here today. I really appreciate your time. Uh, Thank you, Philip. It's my pleasure. Now, um... Tell everybody here just a moment um, where you um, did some of your uh, dental training and implant training, just to get, uh, get us up, caught up to speed with uh, some of your professional background. Sure. My uh, training was uh, at the University of Pennsylvania. I did uh, my uh, DMD and my specialty training at the university in, um, in orthodontics and periodontics. I also did a one-year uh, general practice residency in New York at Maimonides Medical Center. Okay. Great. And was it um, was it there where you kind of developed your, your love for implantology? Yeah, I would say so. Explain to me your association with the Dental XP. Are, are you one of the co-founders uh, or co-owners of the Dental XP? What's your um, official status with that? I was one of the co-founders of Dental XP. I'm a minority shareholder in Dental XP. There's uh, quite a few people involved in an idea that I was involved with at its, at its inception. And uh, it's uh, really been a, an area for me that's been very exciting and has allowed me to uh, engage my fellow colleagues around the world at a, at a, at a pace and, uh, and a consistency that I could only have dreamed of uh, 15 years ago and just travel around the world lecturing. You, um, you lose contact with people. They only get you for a short period of time on that particular day in that particular country, and, and, uh, and then you lose... Uh, interaction with them. They're not able to follow up with you on questions or um, or uh, follow up with some of the things that you're coming up with in terms of the clinical research. So uh, this has been a way at first was developed to stay engaged uh, with these people uh, and provide them resources and education and a community that's professional and safe uh, and to do that, uh, you know, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year um, is uh, really been exceptional, and uh, it's something that has changed the way that I see dentistry, and it has uh, made my impact as an educator uh, exponential from what it could have been, uh, you know, in the days of just uh, didactic learning. Yeah, it, it really puts a lot of information in front of uh, connecting dentists to um, training and CE, and you know, you guys have videos and CE courses and articles and you know, expert um, analysis and, and product uh, breakdown. So it, it's really provided a platform for a lot of the major educators to share, you know, their practices and their studies um, and, and get the word out, which I think is amazing. I really commend you with that. You guys do an awesome job. You guys have a, um, oh, what do you call it? Your big um, symposium. Symposium. Symposiums okay. coming up in February. Is that correct? So explain to people what yeah. uh, what goes on at your symposium. I, I briefly stopped by last year. I happened to be in Las Vegas while it was going on and got to take part in one day, um, but I haven't been through a full event. So kind of tell people what, what goes on at the symposium and, and if they want to come by, what uh, what benefit they would have there. Yeah, the, the, the symposium is now in its sixth year. Uh, it's been really, uh, again, something that uh, has, uh, has been something that has kind of been a surprise. We took something that was a digital medium. Uh, many people said, ah, you know, are people really engaged digitally? Are they just a bunch of voyeurs? Are, are they really committed? And so six years ago, we launched our first ever global symposium in Las Vegas to see, to gauge, uh, are these people real? Are they really involved? Are they just clicking and going uh, like people do these days when they interact socially or uh, digitally? Um, and what we found out on that first meeting is we had over 550 people from over 42 countries that showed up and we were, um, we realized that this is, uh, this is a serious thing and that people are very committed to it. They enjoy it. And what happens is they meet each other, uh, online or they meet, uh, they, they gauge their experience online and then they follow up and they want to be part of these live events. And 
they want to take their education further. And so what started as a purely digital medium has turned into something that's become real through these live courses, whether they be uh, hands-on courses that we do throughout the, the country. We do these mastership level hands-on courses. Uh, and of course, the big gala, the big uh, global symposiums each year, uh, which we're doing this year in um, Hollywood, Florida at the Diplomat Resort and Spa, which has just undergone a $100 million renovation. It's right on the beach there. And uh, you fly into Fort Lauderdale. Um, you can sign up at uh, www.dentalxp.com. You'll see a link um, on that uh, homepage that will take you to the Global Symposium page. It's uh, three days of didactics, and then uh, there will be at least 10 hands-on programs that will be provided on the preliminary days. So for those of you that are interested in uh, doing extra, um, let's say a workshop level or live hands-on training, uh, that will also be available to you. So we really, it's a it's a it's a nice week. Uh, people from all over the world attend these programs. We have, I would have to say, this year in particular, maybe the best program we've ever had because we're having a very significant second day program uh, on uh, tooth replacement strategies with people like Dennis Tarnow, Stephen Chu, uh, Danny Boozer, and Urs Belser from Switzerland and the University of Bern, uh, as well as Howie Gluckman and myself will be debating some of the latest concepts in uh, tooth replacement implant dentistry. Uh, these are all the people that wrote all the papers. Uh, so we are bringing the, the experts in that arena, the people who've published all the relevant data under one area, once, one time, one day, and then the only meeting in the world that's going to take place, and they're going to present their data and then debate. Uh, Homer Zadeh, who is the uh, head of Perio at uh, at USC is going to be the, the person who's going to moderate the debate at the end of that session. And it should be a very exciting day built around or already uh, some of the uh, most uh, well-known and regarded experts in, in the world in implant dentistry, people like Sonia Lazy um, and uh, people like Galip Gurel and uh, many, many others will be uh, uh, speaking at the meeting. So we're expecting a very large turnout. It should be a wonderful three-day event. And as I said, uh, preliminary or pre-symposium events will also be uh, hands-on courses that will be available for those uh, that are interested in that as well. So uh, really top-notch meeting, uh, a meeting that is um, unique in the fact that uh, it's not and it does not benefit uh, an academy. It does not uh it's not a, aligned with an academy or a university. It's actually a, um, a meeting that is uh, for the people, run by dentists, and uh, it's part of a community. So it's a kind of a different feel. When people go there, the social networking uh, uh, opportunities are vast, and we usually have a, a very large international flavor. So it's not your typical regional or national meeting. It is a true international meeting with a uh, top-notch people interacting with one another in a, in a very collegial, warm setting. And I would uh, tell anybody who hasn't experienced it to uh, to certainly uh, consider coming out and joining us in Fort Lauderdale. I think they will uh, certainly enjoy it, and it'll probably be something they have yet to experience in their educational uh, um, uh, backgrounds. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. You know, just going uh, on the website and seeing the uh, the lineup that you have, you guys stay very cutting edge and you bring in the biggest speakers. And I don't know of, of any other place that you can get that kind of um, firepower in such a short amount of um, amount of time. Um, you right now are doing a lot with um, osseodensification and um, partial extraction therapy and Megagen um, implants. Is that right? Can you, can you explain to me um, what, what your latest um, kind of passion is with that and what, what your involvement is with those, those um, techniques and um, instruments these days? Yeah. Well, well, the first thing is that uh, several years ago, uh, we were approached by many of our members, especially those around the world, that were interested in being kept abreast of, you know, latest changes and modifications and tools and techniques and things like that. 
So we have a very robust forum on the, on the Dental XP uh, website where you can post your own cases or you can engage in discussions with other people's cases. And uh, that has really taken off. We have over 10,000 forum posts, uh, and that's something that is uh, it's free on Dental XP. All you need to do is be a free basic member to engage in the forum and also to download uh, PDFs from we have over 400 experts uh, from around the world that post their own uh, handouts and uh, recent articles that they have been involved in publishing. Uh, and all of that is uh, free for basic membership, which is really, uh, there's no reason not to participate. The rest of the website, uh, the lion's share of the website has always been our content. And as you said, we don't just take content from anybody. And none of it is just from companies and sponsored content because that's sort of infomercialish. So we have a scientific board that reviews the content that has to be CE quality. And uh, so therefore, you're never going to be sold items on the site. We do have a product page, but that's just for products. Um, but the content is always uh, is always uh, at top level CE quality uh, and does not have issues with promotions of certain products. Now, people came to us several years back and said, you know, we'd really like an implant fellowship program, something that we can do online and then follow up with mastership, taking hands-on programs that can get us to the level that we need to be with implants. And what we did is we joined forces um, a few years back with NYU uh, in New York City, NYU Dental School, and Ken Beecham, and uh, we recruited some of the top people in the field, like Dennis Tarnow, Stephen Chu, Howie Gluckman, David Garber, myself, and many, many, many others from around the world. And we came up with a, um, a program that's over 158 hours of uh, CE in nine sessions. Um, each session has several modules with exams. Uh, all of it is digital, and uh, you can do the entire program within a year's time and complete the program and then submit for your um, fellowship uh, certificate from Dental XP and NYU. So uh, this has been something that's taken off. We've already had uh, several hundred graduates over the last three years that it's been in, in place and it's been very exciting. And many of those people then uh, go on to try to uh, uh, achieve their mastership level with six hands-on programs that can be taken uh, either in Atlanta uh, or around the country or around the world because we have accredited um, centers around the world that uh, you can go and take the courses if you're in Korea or Japan or the Middle East or Africa or South America. There are centers in all of those places that may be closer to those members since we are a global site. So for those of the in the United States, obviously, we've had the biggest turnout in North America. So um, a lot of people who have actually taken the course uh, have been just so, so pleased by it because, you know, you're, you're getting the best educators, uh, basically, uh, whenever you need them, whatever you want them, just by, you know, going online and getting on your Wi-Fi or cellular networks and doing the, uh, the courses, uh, throughout the world, if wherever you live digitally, um, uh, and gets you under those hours, which, uh, which really, you know, basically gets you all the diagnosis, treatment planning, anatomy, emergency management, uh, surgery, bone, tissue, sinus, um, immediate loading, full arch, uh, all of that is uh, part of the sessions that are provided in this uh, fellowship program with NYU. So that has been something that's very, very exciting for us. Now, in terms of new ideas that we've been passionate about, we've always attempted to modify and change implant dentistry to make it better for patients. And uh, we, a lot of the things you've mentioned, you talked about osteodensification, uh, partial extraction therapy. Those are two things that have been uh, really launched, for lack of a better word, really truly launched and created on Dental XP through what we call crowdsource media, um, basically being able to share content and research online with other collaborators and dentists and surgeons uh, throughout the world that uh, were interested in these new protocols and these new techniques and tools. And we really, uh, in a lot of ways, uh, sped up the learning curve uh, and expedited the launch of these concepts through Dental XP. So um, 
that's something to be really proud of. I've, I've heard people say to me, my gosh, I, you know, if I wasn't on dental XP, I, I wouldn't have gotten started on osteoidentification until now. And I was start, I started doing it four years ago because it was on dental XP before there was ever a, an article uh, published or partial extraction therapy. The term itself uh, was created on dental XP and all the articles, um, at least 90% of the articles on that concept were published through uh, myself and people on dental XP that, uh, that really collaborated on these ideas. So, you know, dental XP has taken on a lot of different roads. It's a, it's a disseminator of new information. It is a way to get accredited and get your base uh, information, a, a cutting edge uh, at that, and to do it most of it digitally, but also at these live programs. And uh, we do a, a global symposium, like we mentioned earlier, every February, but we also do uh, an event every August at NYU. We've been doing now for the last three years. Um, and that program is, a, uh, is an implant summit. So it doesn't include all facets of dentistry, but very focused on implant dentistry. And that's a two-day meeting that we do uh, the second week of August at NYU. So it's, um, it's really taken off. Uh, and uh, we have now currently over 192,000 members in over 150 countries around the world. So uh, Dental XP has uh, really taken off beyond what I could have ever dreamt it is going to be when I when I flippantly uh, suggested uh, it to my partners uh, and to, to take on that investment and it's been rewarding and it's been everything and then some uh, and it just keeps growing and uh, uh, modifying itself and changing uh, to the current arena and what's needed by dentists throughout throughout the world and I think we're meeting that demand and that challenge and we're able to do it quickly and swiftly because we're we don't have to run it by the universities or the uh, dental uh, uh, academies or um, or for that end internationally, not only here in the United States. So we're able to get things done quickly. And I think that's why people like it so much that uh, we're really um, designed to meet a very fast moving uh, educational and technological environment that uh, we're up against today in, uh, in, in specifically in plant dentistry, but in really all of dentistry. Yeah, you guys have a lot of great programs. So you've got your annual summit. You've got, like you said, the the clinical master's program pathway for implant dentistry, which is, is basically a year-long curriculum. Then you said in August, you've got your implant summit. And then you also team up with uh, Mike Picos uh, what, every other year or so for the uh, Synergy program. Now, now, what's the uh, Synergy program all about? Is that just advanced grafting techniques, or what all what all is covered at those events? Because those those have been around for a while, and those are a pretty big deal. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, that one that one's been around since two thousand and three. So, Mike and I uh, just finished doing our uh, uh, seventh uh, biannual meeting this past June. Uh, we typically get. Uh, around 150 to 200 uh, doctors who are very committed and serious about uh, advancing their uh, implant and grafting practices. And uh, we come there and it's an intense, I would call it an immersion program. It's a three and a half days with a last, last day hands-on program and bonus soft tissue augmentation. It, um, it's really, uh, as you said, uh, current and advanced techniques in bone, tissue, and sinus, and immediate loading uh, concepts. So uh, we really talk about growth factors, bioengineering, uh, some of the new tools. Osteodensification obviously was uh, was highlighted there. So was partial uh, extraction therapy, the utilization of bone morphogenic proteins and plasma-rich uh, proteins, uh, blood-borne bioactive modifiers. And so we we really attempt to give it all to you. And as a matter of fact, the booklet that uh, the students leave there with this year, it was over 950 pages. So um, there, we actually cover uh, all 900 pages uh, in those three and a half days. So it's intense. It's eight uh, in the morning till six at night each day. Um, and as I said, it's a real immersion course. You, you, you're not coming there to just walk the exhibit halls or to meet your friends and sit for coffee or have drinks. Uh, the people that come there, uh, they come serious, ready 
uh, and they're engaged uh, morning till night on every single day. And uh, that's been a lot of fun. What really gravitated from that point to get expert ship level is we offer a, this will be the sixth year and we're sold out once again. Every year we take a group of uh, North American dentists to uh, UNEMIS Metropolitan University in Santos, Brazil for a live patient hands-on event uh, under the auspices of the university. Uh, and, uh, the Dean of the dental schools involved, as well as the mayor of the city, uh, they welcome us there and we take a whole group of proctors and they basically give us the run of the university. It's a brand new, uh, educational center that was just built, uh, just updated last year, cost over $30 million for the up- updates and upgrades. And uh, we've been doing it for the last six years. So this year, again, it's the uh, second week of December every year and uh, sold out once again. And we have proctors that come from around the world. We have Howie Gluckman from South Africa, uh, Marcelo Ferrer from Chile, uh, Manuel De La Rosa from uh, Mexico, uh, Aptin Shariari, oral surgeon uh, from here in Georgia. And, and it just goes on and on and on. So we bring out our own faculty and then we combine it with their faculty of periodontists and oral surgeons and implantologists, prosthodontists there at the school. And what I like about it is that I was, I've been offered to do this program in uh, the Dominican Republic, in Jamaica, in Mexico. And, uh, you know, and every time I looked, it was always private clinics. And I, I just never felt that that's where, how these programs should be done. I think they should be in protected environments, uh, in university settings so that these uh, patients don't get forgotten, uh, that it's done in an ethical, clean, sterile environment. Uh, And when they offered me the opportunity to do that, I went down to to evaluate the center, met with the uh, dean of the school, with the chairmen of the department, um, and they explained to me how it would be run and that these patients would all get followed up and post-op checks and everything was with a cone beam CT, models, and that these patients would not be let go and, uh, and would be treated uh, fairly and humane. And all of the cases would get completed uh, by the graduate students at the school. And that's exactly what they've done. Because every year we come back now, six years later, and we see the patients we did the year before. And the faculty and the university have stuck by their, uh, their promise to me. And these patients have all been completed all their prosthetic work, all of their uh, suture removals, post-ops, uh, implant placement in some cases has been done um, when we leave. And I think that that's really the way that these live programs should be done under uh, university standards. And it's unfortunate that in many places, uh, they're now taking these people to uh, foreign countries, Mexico, Dominican, Jamaica, many, many Costa Rica, where these programs are being done in um, for lack of a better term, they're being done in small private practice settings where some of these patients are being used inappropriately. They're not sterile uh, situations, and then they are um, they're lost. They don't, they're not being followed up, and they're not being cared for afterwards and being treated a little bit like guinea pigs. So I never wanted to uh, participate in those kinds of programs, and uh, this program in particular each December uh, has been uh, probably to me the most uh, fulfilling because we get to treat and put in hundreds of implants on patients that otherwise could never afford it. Uh, We do it in December, so it's usually almost like a Christmas gift for many of these people. Uh, Some of them never had teeth or haven't had teeth in decades. And we leave and they have overdentures or all on four fixed prosthetics that have been placed uh, during the time that we're there. So uh, talk about having your teeth for Christmas. We really actually have done that. That's been exciting. Yeah. So you've got so many different <clears throat> CE courses that you're teaching. I can't imagine how you have any time for uh, private practice, but I know you you still practice uh, in your office with your partners. What's the most exciting thing that you do in private practice these days? I know you may not be there much. What What's that look like for you? Actually, I, I, I'm one of those people who don't believe you can be a good educator if you're not in the trenches doing it yourself. So uh, I still practice three days a week, but I've been blessed as I work in a group practice is fairly well known. We've been known as Team Atlanta for many years. Uh, Ronald Goldstein, who's, God bless, still practicing two days a week. He's 84 years young, and uh, he was really the originator of the team concept. He wrote the, the famous book, uh, 
Change Your Smile, which is the top selling book in, in the history of dentistry, and, uh, published in 25 different languages uh, and has sold over a million copies. So it's a pleasure to work with a person like him, David Garber, my brother, Henry Salama, Abtin Shariari. Um, and now this year we had the opportunity, um, you know, as you start to need uh, new dentists, to pick up the slack and also to bring in some of the new digital uh, technologies. We've, um, we are now in the process of bringing new blood into the office, which is really exciting. So uh, we are bringing uh, two uh, prosthodontic residents who just finished their programs at Augusta University with uh, Gerard Sheesh as their program director. So they're coming with incredible training. Marco Todras, as well as Marcelo Silva, they're going to be joining the practice. Uh, Mar Marco's already joined us in August, and Marcelo's joining us in January. And uh, we continue to grow and evolve. Uh, we just hired a new uh, ceramist for our laboratory, in-house laboratory. Uh, and so uh, we continue to grow, just like I told you, that you never stand still. You always got to improve. You always have to get better, and you have to evolve. Uh, and I think Team Atlanta is in that evolutionary step where we're bringing in young dentists and we're getting younger. And now, uh, uh, you know, the ages for me and David and Ronald were 50, 60, 70, and 80 with Henry. And now you're bringing in dentists in their thirties. Um, so, uh, the age of the practice, the excitement that they bring to the office and some of the new concepts that, uh, they were uh, able to learn in their residency programs and prosthetic training programs. Uh, have really uh, allowed us to step up our game from a digital standpoint. So we're doing a lot of our own 3D printing. Um, Dental XP will be launching a digital program next year, a uh, hands-on program, which will involve, which will involve uh, basically photography and digital smile design concepts. And then, of course, uh, mock-ups, uh, 3D printing, uh, planning your cases for tone beam CT setups for surgical guides, how to do them yourself, and then, of course, uh, advanced courses in, uh, in CAD-CAM milling. So uh, we're really you know, changing what we're doing in the office, and therefore that changes what we're able then to teach. Because as I said before, if, if you're not there and doing it, uh, you'll, get, you, you'll get old pretty quickly, not only uh, in chronological age, but really even more importantly, you just can't stay up to date because dentistry is changing so rapidly and so quickly that uh, it's almost an impossibility for you to stay abreast of all the, the changes, especially in the digital realm. Uh, realm. So um, we're we're obviously moving in that direction, uh, and uh, and that's been very exciting. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's great that um, you know you stay in private practice and you teach and you've got other things because I feel like if you just have a foot in one of those pathways, you can't understand you know, the needs of, of your, of the people come in your class. You don't understand what really happens in the, in the private practice. Um, and, and if you're just a purely private practice dentist, you don't always understand, you know, what goes on in education. And so it's, it's good to keep up on all aspects of that. Um, and, and, and I think that's important. Now I, I've kept you uh, about as long as, uh, as, as I'd promised. I know you're, a, you're a busy man and I, I kind of probably caught you over your lunch hour. Um, I'll, I'll ask you, uh, two kind of back to back questions here to finish up. What would be three uh, techniques or tools that you can't um, do without in your practice today? Oh, I think that that's a great question. I think that, uh, you know, we implemented very early on cone beam CT technology. So I think that uh, I don't see how any implantologist, modern day implantologist can work without it. We were one of the first 20 offices in the country to have a cone beam CT. Uh, we took that big step and, and, and certainly in terms of cost. A very large step because it was a big, a big price tag that took a uh, you know four or five years for us to pay off the debt on that, but it was well worth it. Couldn't live without it. Uh, secondarily, I think uh, piezo surgery. Um, I think if you're going to be doing a lot of these advanced uh, cases, the uh, opportunity to use that kind of technology from a surgical standpoint uh, for uh, implant placement, ridge splitting, sinus augmentation, uh, extraction therapy. Um, uh, even basic, uh, you know, flap elevation and uh, for periodontal surgery, uh, crown lengthening. I think that the piezo device has changed surgical dentistry, and I couldn't do without that. And then third, I think he asked me for three. I think I, I couldn't, uh, there's no way I could live without or practice without um, 
bioengineering and bioactive modifiers. And I've been using in particular autologous blood uh, as a source for my bioactive modifiers. And I've had the opportunity of working with PRP, PRGF, and PRF, uh, which are the three really standards of bloodborne bioactive uh, modalities over the last 15, 16 years. And uh, I think that uh, I couldn't work and do the types of surgeries I do today um, with the same type of healing that I have and the same type of success, minimally invasively, and with uh, low complications without uh, using bloodborne bioactive materials. So CBCT, piezo surgery, and uh, PRF, PRGF would be uh, things I just, uh, I think that my practice couldn't do without. Excellent. Excellent. I, I always love to hear, you know, what people are using and, and what they feel or, uh, you know, their, their go-tos because it's, um, you know, everybody practices different, but, um, we all, we all hope for the same result, you know, um, you know, to get the patients healthy and restored aesthetically and functionally. Sure. I mean, you can look at things as what's the minimum standard. I mean, I, I always, people hear people say standard of care. Um, but yet I think that we should aim to deliver above the standard of care. And uh, those types of devices that I've just mentioned um, are aiming to provide an above standard. And uh, being educated also allows you to be more precise in your diagnosis and realistic in your treatment plans. And uh, that's why um, even for me, and I tell people this all the time, this is honestly and truly, uh, I'm very well read in the literature, and I've published uh, many, many uh, book chapters and articles and clinical research papers in my lifetime. I continue to do so. But by the time the article gets published, it usually has taken three, maybe four years to get it there. And what Dental XP offers is the opportunity to get that information right away. You don't have to wait for the periodicals and to read it. Uh, it's right there in front of you. I personally have learned an enormous amount. From, my, from the website that I created to teach other people. In fact, it has taught me. I have become personally a better clinician, a better operator, and uh, I have performed better for my patients because of my interaction with Dental XP. I myself have learned from the other experts. So um, as a kind of a segue into, towards the conclusion of this interview, I would simply say for those of you out there that think that's just for novices or beginners uh, or in intermediates, but not for advanced. Uh, I, I, it's, I completely disagree. It's for every person. Um, there are grad students using the site uh, I know of because I, I still lecture at the universities around the country and there are beginners and they're intermediates, but there are also advanced people who participate, partake in the educational environment. Uh, and they come to me all the time and say, hey, this has been a lifesaver for me. It has helped me enormously and impacted my practice and impacted the way that I do dentistry and implant dentistry in particular. Um, and uh, they thank me for that. And I, and I have to say that's been, to me, uh, the thing that I'm most proud of out of all the things. There's not, a, there's not something in dentistry I'm more proud of than my involvement in Dental XP and the impact it's had on raising the standard of care around the world. Yeah, that's fantastic. Not everybody has the opportunity to, uh, to have such an involvement with that. So it, it takes special people to kind of raise the bar. And I know you've been very instrumental with that. So last thing here, um, we'll go through, and you probably just answered one of them. If you were looking to give advice to um, the next generation of implant dentists coming up, obviously one of them would probably be to get involved with the Dental XP community, get online, go to the uh, symposiums and get involved there. What other two things would you recommend? So I'm just going to go ahead and throw the one in there for you and say, get, in, get involved with Dental XP. I think it's an easy one. Uh, you asked a good question. These are really great questions, but this is a real important one. When you say get involved, I, I think that what's happening out there, people think that uh, digital means anywhere. Uh, so I hear a lot of people saying, I saw this on YouTube, or I saw this on Facebook, or somebody mentioned it on Twitter. Be careful where you're getting your information. You, would you, would you want to go to a physician that learned how to do something on YouTube or Twitter uh, or Facebook or, uh, or any of the other, you know, digital platforms. I think that as, the, as I said before, um, the reason I go to Brazil is because I want to do it in a university based protected, you know, and, and something that, that you don't have to worry about the patients in the same manner. 
you got to be concerned about where you're getting your information. Is it being evaluated by a scientific committee? Is it being uh, scrutinized before it's being posted? And uh, Dental XP offers the opportunity of getting information online, but it's being reviewed. The experts need to pass by the scientific committee. The content needs to be accepted uh, the same way an article needs to be accepted. So be careful where you get your information. So yes, number one, I would say uh, for those just coming up in the field, be careful where you get your information. I know it's easy to get information online, but be careful of your sources. Go to a refereed source. Dental XP is truly that. And it is easy for you to get involved. You can, you know, it's just like, a, you know, owning a cable TV. You can get on there and see as much or as little as you want. There's no, uh, there's no criteria for you. You can go and click on the search bar for the things that you want to learn more about. So um, it allows you to cut to the, to the material that is most appropriate, what you want to learn. So the, from that standpoint, a search tool allows you to, to get through the material much faster. And then secondarily, I think that if you haven't already gone through a implant program to get your base of, of quality information, um, I would tell you that if you compare uh, dental XP's faculty and cost, you don't have to travel to go to university-based programs or some of these other programs around the country where you have to go to physically go to hear the lectures. I think that's a waste of time and money. Um, those programs, sometimes I know of ones in, in Georgia that, that uh, costs are $18,000 and you have to fly into Atlanta or Augusta, you know, eight, nine, 10 times uh, eight, a weekends a year. That's a lot of money, a lot of time out of your practices. Um, and then the faculty isn't, you know, may not be the types of faculty that uh, you, that you had wanted or would have expected. So on Dental XP, you get a chance to evaluate the faculty. You get to do it all online. You don't have to travel anywhere. You don't have to leave your office, your family, um, and you can stay productive. And at the same time, you get your hours and you get your CE and you get your fellowship training. Um, I would definitely do that. And it's only it's less than $3,000. So the cost comparatively to some of these other courses, whether they be maxi courses or other courses, uh, are certainly uh, 20% of what you would be paying elsewhere. And that doesn't even include the time out of office, the hotel stays, the plane flights. Um, so, uh, I would recommend for younger dentists who may already be tapped out with debt from school and just getting started in their practices and needing to stay in their offices to produce an online program, which is a low cost opportunity to get that education without having to travel and leave your, your offices and your, and your homes, I think is, uh, is a no brainer as a decision. Yeah, no, I think I think that's good advice. Um, you got to get a pro, you got to get on a program, and you got to find people who, uh, like you said, go 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 get the right information from the right sources, and then you've got to take a uh, a learning program that um, you know some some real some real thought and some leadership's been put into it to help guide you in that process. And um, I'm glad that you guys are providing uh, that these days. You know, with um, partly digital and partly. Um, uh, you know, clinical situations because you, you know, you're right. Some of this can be done at home, you know, lectures yeah. um, can be given and seen and papers can be read. And then, and then obviously there's the mentorship that comes with the hands-on and the, and the physical, just learning the skills that, that you provide after that. So I, I definitely, um, I definitely think you guys are onto something with that. You know, what's really interesting is I've actually, uh, you know, I've, I've obviously been a proctor and lectured at those programs and some of these poor people are traveling over great distances and time changes. They come in and they sit in the room in these in these dark rooms that a projector playing for six, seven, eight hours, and a lot of them fall asleep. And to tell you the truth, they fall asleep. They miss the lecture. They don't get a chance to see it again because it hasn't been taped. And then they ask for all this information later, or they forgot it, or they missed it. And uh, and I don't blame them. It's tough, you know, to travel across the country or something that's from out of the country. And and I always said to myself, I said, why today modern education? You know, even at most dental schools, but lots of most big universities, all of this stuff is being recorded and online. So a lot of students can go back and see the entire lecture uh, online. So if it's good enough for current uh, education at the at postdoctoral and below postdoctoral, then I don't see why people would want to travel around 
to hear a lecture. What I think where you should be spending the money is to go to live, hands-on, practical programs. Now that, that's where money should be spent. Uh, that, to me, is the value. But as far as didactic learning and lectures, to get on a plane, travel around the country, get in a hotel room, and get on a bus, go to a place just to hear lectures, just because that, that academy is going to eventually give you a certificate that you think is valuable, is really misguidance to me. And it's unfortunate that so many people around the world fall into that trap. And I think that it, it's changing, and the world's changing, and it's changing slowly. And good quality education is available, and you don't have to leave your home for a lot of it. And if you're going to leave your home, leave your home for, for non-didactic courses, for workshops and live courses where you can interact and you can practice the techniques. So to me, that would be, my, uh, that would be what I would tell a young dentist or a recent graduate or even somebody who's decided that, hey, you know, I'd like to get into implants. I haven't been doing them. Uh, it doesn't matter what age you are, but that's what I would do. Great. Yeah. Get get the most bang for your buck and get get that mentorship uh, with the hands-on where it really counts because that's, that's when you want somebody over your shoulder. So, well, uh, Dr. Slam, I, I really appreciate your time. I'll let you go. Uh, I know I've, I've kept you at our limit, so I really appreciate that. I uh, look forward to meeting you at one of these uh, Dental XP events um, in person and, and really appreciate your time today, okay? Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. And I hope that it was uh, informative. Very beneficial. I'm sure that my audience will love it. Thank you so much. 